Hello everyone. This morning, or afternoon, I'm going to teach you how to make a paper mache bowl. Now first of all, you must have an adult with you to help you with this art. <clears throat> because you have to use scissors and flour and water. So, first of all, you cut some strips of paper. Now, an inch, about an inch across. I've used an old TV magazine because I find that newspaper, the print might come out and then you'll get very dirty hands. And while we're on the subject of hands, if you have any trouble with sensitive skin, please wear a pair of rubber gloves, which will protect your hands from the mixture. <clears throat> First of all, we take, we make the mixture. Now this is one part flour to two parts water. And you mix it up till there are no lumps, just like that. And it's a bit like pancake batter, but don't be tempted to make it into a pancake. If you put a little bit of salt in the mixture, it'll stop it going moldy. <clears throat> so there's your mixture. I've made a little bit, just to show you how we could do this. Then you take a bowl. Now, you should use a glass bowl, but I don't have any little glass bowls, so I've got a plastic bowl. You cover your bowl with tin foil, like this. That's good. And I like a scrunchy effect on the outside of my paper papier mache bowl so I scrumple my tin foil up like this to give that sort of effect. If you want a smooth bowl you have to be very careful putting your tin foil over the bowl so that it's nice and smooth. Then you take a spray of cooking oil if you haven't got a spray, just use a brush with ordinary cooking oil and you spray the tin foil and this makes it easier to remove your bowl when you've finished. <clears throat> you then take your strips and you dip them in the mixture, making sure the mixture gets well onto the strips and then you hold it up, wipe it off at the side so that it's not all drippy. Then you place your paper, which is all soggy by now and it's a really messy thing to do, over your foil. You can place it in any direction you like and make sure they fit. Right, I'm putting one round that way. And more this way. Now if you find they're too long and they overlap your bowl, just tuck them in or leave them hanging like so and you can cut them off afterwards. You cover your whole bowl with these strips And if you run out of mixture, just pop to your kitchen and make some more. Right, you cover your whole bowl with this. When you've nearly covered your bowl, you put some, mix, some um, strips round the top to give a nice edge. Now, Last time I did this, I used a double layer and that was not very clever because it took days and days to dry and then made my bowl quite thick. I'll show you in a minute. Right, there are the strips. So you put the strips like this, but you have to cover your whole bowl and then you leave it to dry for a few days. Well, actually, maybe a few hours. 
when you've finished, whoops, you take your bowl off the tin foil and you end up with something like this. But don't make the mistake I made and do too many layers because it'll take, as I said before, ages and ages to dry. When your bowl is completely dry, if you've got any um, rough bits around the edge, you can snip them off like so or ask an adult to do it for you. When it's completely dry and solid, you can varnish the inside. Now, I don't think you need proper varnish. I think some old nail varnish would do. Or you can paint it and you can paint the outside of your bowl. But actually, I quite like seeing some of the things that it said in the TV paper. So there you go. That's how you make a papier-mâché bowl. And when it's completely dry, if you want to paint and decorate it, paint it and then cover it with some sort of nail varnish or decorate it with stickers and you've got something to keep your little treasures in or your sweets. So I hope you have fun with that. Bye!